Doing a movie musical is one of the hardest things you can pull off in the business. And it's really about the director. Um, and I just worked with Michael Gracie, who's a very, very successful, well-known commercials director and music video director. I had a feeling that he was going to be a great director and I wanted to work with him. And on the last day of filming, we wrapped high fives, hugs, and I said, uh, we should do a film together. And he looked at me, he's an Aussie, and we know each other well, and he goes, yeah, whatever, Jackman. I said, oh, fine, you don't have to do a movie with me if you don't want it. And he goes, listen, here's the deal. I've been doing commercials for 10 years, and I don't know what it is, but you actors on the last day, I don't know if you're trying to be nice or you get caught up in the moment, but every actor says, we should do a movie together. Now, it's nice, but for the first five years, I would ring my mum immediately and say, George Clooney wants to do a movie with me. Leonardo DiCaprio wants to... And of course, none of those movies ever came to me. <laughs> so, whatever. Anyway, six months later, after Larry Ma came to me with this idea and we had a script, I sent it to him and he rang me back immediately. He goes, holy... <clears throat> He developed pretty quickly the famous Michael Gracie pitch. Now, it's a, the, Michael Gracie does a pitch where, honestly, he's better than I've ever been playing P.T. Barnum. It's 45 minutes, and he tells a story, and he had an artist friend of his draw this beautiful concept art. He, we, at this point, had three songs. So he had three songs to, for people to listen to, and he would talk them through the, the movie. He did 1,000 of these pitches to producers, musicians, studio heads, actors, anyone who would listen, who he thought might help get the movie made, he gave the pitch to. Um, and there was not one person he pitched to who didn't buy in after the 45 minutes. His vision is incredible, but his determination is like nothing I've ever seen before. There was no option for him than this movie getting made. The story is so full of heart and it's about imagination, it's about passion and following your dreams and just abandon, fearless abandon in the end. Well, back in 1850, that wasn't America as we know it today. You were limited by the family you were born into, your name, uh, the class you were. It was a very religious society and the idea of just entertainment for fun was almost borderline considered evil. So everything that he liked and loved people and him, people sort of trampled on and he was a little bit trampled on really and that gave him this fire to break out of just normality, mundane, everyday uh, hamster wheel existence. He was going to live the life of his dreams. He knew how to make something out of nothing, how to turn lemons into lemonade. And I've always loved that quality. Nothing anybody said would stop him. He followed his own path and any setback he had, he managed to turn, literally turn that setback into a positive. He believed that what makes you different actually makes you special. It's something that resonates today, I think, in a huge way. And I think everybody can relate to it, particularly young kids. And that's why I'm so thrilled about this, the theme of this movie, that it really does empower people to just be themselves. A Million Dreams was the first song that Justin uh, and Benj wrote or gave to us. Uh, it's such a beautiful song. I loved it. It was my favorite song out of the first three that we had. Um, just stuck into your head and it's got an innocence as you follow the young Barnum at about age 8 or 10 with all those all the possibilities that an 8 year old has that limitless, limitless imagination and all those dreams in his head and his desire one day to live this to live out his fantasy and, there's, and then you watch him grow up during that um, holding on to that uh, for a long time anyway, holding on to that limitless possibility of life and it's a it's a very beautiful and sweet song that I think with a beautiful lyric that uh, I've always found very touching. They pushed all of us to do things, I did things dance-wise that I've never done before um, and I like to dance and I like to work hard. The style that he was creating was modern and cool. My 11-year-old 
kept wanting to come and learn how to do the dance. You know, this is Barnum. He wouldn't want some staid old period piece. He'd want the music, he'd want the dance to be fantastic and cutting edge and new and something you'd never seen before. That was his motto. If you haven't been to the Barnum Museum lately, you haven't been to the Barnum Museum. Like everything has to evolve and change. So Ash's stuff, it just feels fresh and new. And I don't care how many Katy Perry concerts you go to or how many Broadway shows you go to, you just haven't seen anything like this. When he signed on to this, uh, and that was Michael Gracie's idea, I was just so excited because this has to have spectacle. It has to have a unique style visually. It had to have something that looked like nothing else. Ellen, our costume, our designer, was aware that we have to obviously make, it makes sense of it being in 1850. So of course it looks like that, but somehow make it look like something that could exist in a Vogue cover shoot that was themed on Barnum. And finding that balance is extremely difficult. What he represents, this idea that you can be whatever you want. You can choose the life you want to be. Yes, you have to work hard. Yeah, you have to have imagination. Yeah, you've got to have talent, but you can do it. Um, that's why, to me, Barnum is a uniquely American story. I know he was really excited, really determined to do something different to what he'd done before, to take his skills, dance skills, whatever, vocally to a, a different level, and he did. I mean, his singing is astonishing, his dancing is amazing, he worked really hard on that. And he's just fantastic in the film. As soon as the camera's on her, it's astonishing. She's a true star, a true hard worker. When she dances, and she's with 20 of the best dancers in the world, your eye goes to her. When she sings, I mean, when I would do my vocal sessions with Justin and Benj, they were like, no, this way, this way, like really. And with her, they just let it go. She's a pure natural. She is unbelievably respectful to everyone she works with, incredibly professional. And this really hasn't happened very often in my life to work with someone where it's so blindingly obvious that she is going to be, if she wants it, the biggest star of her generation. And that could be in music, or dance, or acting, whatever she wants. Michael said to Justin and Benj, we need a song, we're going to pitch to the studio, we need a song. And they said, well, that's tomorrow. And he says, yeah. And he goes, we're getting on a plane today. And they went, yeah. So they have a keyboard on the plane with headphones, and they wrote that song on the plane. And the moment I heard it, I was like, okay, that's a huge hit, um, and I wish I was singing it. Hey guys, what did you think of that video? Now, stay with me as I have a pretty interesting behind the scenes fact for you. Now, a lot of work goes into the making of movies and sometimes accidents can happen during production. The largest number of fatalities ever in a production of a film occurred during the shooting of the 1931 film Viking, when a ship they were shooting from exploded in the ice of the coast of Newfoundland. 27 people died, including producer and co-director Varike Frissel, as well as collaborator A.G. Penrod. The incident is one of the most infamous in movie history, and the film was made in tribute to those who lost their lives. The opening cards describing the accident and the film are genuinely touching. On that sad note, I will leave you and remind you that we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. See you soon.